Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and welcome to episode 14 of my series Casual vs Speedrun in GTA 5. After the last mission, reuniting the family ends, the game forces a switch to Trevor where he is on this island, mostly naked with some dead guys in a boat. The speedrun will jump away from the rock, wait for Trevor to come to a stop, then initiate a switch to Franklin, while the casual mosey around a bit on the boat before also deciding to switch to Franklin, since there is an F mission near Franklin's likely spawn point. The reason the speedrun jumped is that switching the Franklin here immediately starts Architect's plans, but not truly immediately. The jump and small weight ensures the mission actually has a chance to spawn in. If you switch any faster, the mission won't be spawned in and Franklin will be somewhere randomly around the map. Since this mission is auto-started, similar to the mission Predator in Episode 9, Franklin is on site already. We'll watch the casual first, as he gets yelled at for not having a hard hat on. Or casual, the speedrun won't get yelled at like that. The goal of this mission is short, tail the architect and steal his briefcase as the plans are needed to break into the government building. The casual tails the guy up to the elevators, staying back a ways and trying to be sneaky. Something silly I noticed while recording this, the speed at which these construction elevators move is FPS based, so when I record at 140 FPS on my PC they just fly right up, but on a console's 30 FPS they look reasonable, instead of crushing poor Franklin's spine. Passing these two workers, the casual bumps into the guy on the corner which alerts them, and has to chase down the architect to punch him out before he escapes, as well as the two workers after. It is possible to do this without alerting the workers or the police, but well, hashtag just casual things. So now the casual has to escape the police, which takes them a while as always, then head over to Lester's workshop. Now for the speedrun, the moment the player gains control of Franklin after the cutscene, they will pull out their gun and just shoot the architect then run over and grab his plans. Getting the cops due to this kill and then escaping from them would normally take about the same amount of time as doing the stealth kill, however, we have a convenient way to lose the cops. The old strategy in this mission was to shoot once to spook the architect out of his vehicle, then shoot again to kill him. We'd use the empty driver's seat to get right into his car and drive away with it. However, we now run back to Franklin's car and take it over to the Los Santos Customs near Lester's warehouse. Just like in older GTAs, changing the color of your car loses the cops, so we take the vehicle in and change it. While in the shop, we will also upgrade all the performance related stats, turbo, transmission, spoiler, and engine. While heading inside, scroll the weapon wheel as soon as the car can fit under the door, which causes the animation of the car pulling in the Los Santos Customs not play, and we drive right in and open the menu manually. You can do that yourself quite easily, even in GTA Online. We also grab armor to ensure a strategy later on in the very last mission can work properly. Losing half a second by armoring up to ensure a 10 second time save later on works is worth it. Now, when repainting the car, we want the fastest option, and the default option is chrome when you click into the respray menu, so that's what the speedrun gets. Many people have asked why we don't upgrade the car earlier, and there's a few reasons. One, we don't have enough money early in the game to really unlock anything. Two, you only unlock the higher tier upgrades later in the game and the low tier ones aren't worth it. 3. The time it takes just isn't worth it. This is the only point in the game where we happen to be in the shop in a character's car anyways, and we use Franklin's car for two really long drives later in the game still, where the extra power actually really helps. Now both players are synced back up in the heist selection, and the speedrun takes the roof entry option here, so the casual will do the same for the comparison's sake. I will show a comparison between the speedrun doing the fireman entry option as well at the end of the video, to explain why the roof one is faster. As Michael exits the door here, the speedrun will hold the switch button for Franklin, and it has about a 2 second window to release it and switch to him right away. And that switch takes place during the mission end screen, so the speedrun can only hear it and not see it, but at this moment it is the end of the mission for both players, and due to killing the architect right away and then using the car shop to change the color of Franklin's car, the speedrun was a full 4 minutes faster than the casual, tying two other missions for being the biggest difference between casual vs speedrun, with all three at a 64% difference in mission time. I am actually surprised how much quicker this one was, also partially due to the Trevor Island switch and starting the mission slowly. So on to Bureau Raid, and the speedrun finishes the switch to Franklin. The speedrun's goal here is to get the text from Lester as soon as possible, so by switching the Franklin instead of staying as Michael, we are able to get into a car and get farther away from the warehouse. The message can't spawn unless the player is a certain distance from said building. If the speedrun stayed as Michael, they would get a text message while driving away still, initiating that 20 second cooldown on text we talked about before. But by being Franklin, we can get out of range of the building and get Lester's text for his try. 
Now, due to the way I record these videos in segments, I actually have to jump the video to give the speedrun the Lester text right away. Otherwise, my recording's playthrough doesn't get the text normally. But in a true continuous run, this is how it would look. So we'll adjust the recording for that, and the speedrun can drive back to start the mission, and they will open the phone as Franklin entering the door, as for some reason that skips having to walk up the stairs as him before the cutscene begins. The casual was driving on to the next mission they saw on the minimap, but turned around when they got the text. See how the casual has to run all the way up those steps still? Starting Bureau Raid proper now, as Franklin we can jump down and get into Michael's car, and shoot out the window which spooks him to run faster into the passenger seat. Michael's car is always here and available, but if the player arrives in a better vehicle from that time waiting for the text, it's available to take as well. However, getting a car better than Michael's is rare in this area, and I've honestly never taken anything else I brought here. The speedrun will go right up the hill, off-road a bit, then jump off the little extension they get onto the rails, which lead right up to the government building out here. On the rails, they will of course ride them as much as they can to avoid being slowed down by the dirt. The casual is following the Rockstar route, and going onto the freeway, past the security checkpoint and finally through the parking lots, which takes quite a while. The speedrun gets away with just jumping the fence at the closest point to the marker to begin the next part of the mission, and running over to it. Flying the heli up to the marker in the sky is pretty straightforward. This is the only time the speedrun tends to use the look at objective button so we can moderate forward momentum and upward lift to arrive at the sky checkpoint as fast as possible. Most other times flying in the game don't require such a large change in altitude over such a short distance. I always laugh at Rockstar when jumping out of the helicopter here. In every other mission, getting out of a vehicle, even in scripted stuff like diving off the boat and monkey business, is the F key or Y on controller. But for some reason it's space on keyboard or X on controller in this mission. Incredibly random. I know I didn't mention the PlayStation buttons there, only the Xbox ones, and I could google it but I'm not going to just to spite you. If you ever play this game yourself again, I think it's really evident that nearly every mission seemed to have a different programmer, and they assigned keys and NPC behavior differently on a whim, making for a rather inconsistent experience for the trained eye. Landing at the FIB building is easy enough. The speedrun tilts down to go fast and pull a late shoot, while the casual sees the NPCs pull their shoots early and follow suit. Every speedrun, this NPC in the back falls while parachuting because we rush him down. Every. Time. It's great! In this mission, we are breaking into the FIB building the steel files for Dave and Steve, as well as wiping files implicating Michael. Once inside, the speedrun quickly heads over the place the C4 to get in the door, while the casual tries to interact and is told by the game to use explosives. For the first hacking minigame, the speedrun does have a few tips in finding the numbers quickly. I generally look at the first two sets of numbers, 62 and 03 here, while starting in the center and slowly looking out to the edges. Getting repeated numbers is always nice, as they tend to stand out a bit more. The game is sometimes very mean and will put nearly identical sequences somewhere on the page, which sucks. The second minigame is simple, just time things up and hope you get lucky to have letters close by. If they're at the same level, you can't actually do them in a row, there's a small delay within the game until you can select another and it will fail you. For this following shootout, it's pretty simple since we can't move Michael from this cover, there's basically zero chance of dying. Just mow down the enemies as fast as possible in the semi-consistent spawn points. A good fight will be fast enough that NPC Franklin can kill the guys on the left that you can't see as Michael because everyone on Michael's field of view is dead quick enough for the AI to not target them. In this instance, the speedrun had to clean up one guy as Franklin, but he was a late spawn stuck near the door, so we're not really sure if that's due to slow shooting or just being unlucky. Phase 2 of the shootout is basically the same, but easier. The smoke grenades come down, and the casual will have no problem here, because the auto aim he uses with controller will still lock on to enemies behind the fog. So this is actually the only time in the run that I use controller for shooting as the speedrun too for the same reason. The auto aim just grabs everyone behind the smoke, no problem. Once that's all done, we move on to the escape, and the speedrun jumps ahead to move faster indoors. The next few room breaches are designed to startle the casual, but the speedrun knows what will be happening and just kills the enemies, knowing where they will be behind the doors, which also prevents extra dialogue. Coming through the first door, the speedrun kills both guys right away, while the casual takes time to stare down the enemy before executing him as some dialogue plays. In the next staircase, the NPC shoots the agent no matter what, so the speedrun has no use in killing him ourselves. We just move to the position for the next breach, where we'll kill the guy on the left as our team gets the guy on the right. Then the speedrun is no longer constrained by the doors and can run through quickly killing enemies, and doing so with hip fire when possible to keep our speed up, along with jumping to go faster and using the weapon swap trick to reload. I'm back on keyboard and mouse shooting for the speedrun again. The auto aim in GTA is pretty strong and honestly not the worst part of running on console, but manual aiming for headshots is still the faster way to get through shootouts. 
This next section to get to the rappel point is more of the same. Hip fire, jump, weapon swap, and don't die. Especially don't die. There are a few bugs that can muck with the speedrun here. First, these enemies usually spawn and run in the same spots every time, but sometimes stop running and begin shooting early, which can be annoying. And the rapid fire bug that's been previously discussed can happen here too. I'll put a link to how that works in the description for anyone who forgot. As well, sometimes enemies, especially in these tight hallways, will get a final shot off as they fall over and die, and when it's a shotgun that does that, it can take over half your health up close. The casual doesn't have too much trouble here, as they take cover, move slowly, and still have the NPCs for backup help. Repelling down is easy, you can just hold the button combination and it does everything for you. Even the casual figures that out after a moment. For the chopper, the speedrun just aims well to get the pilot. I'll enter Michael's slowdown if I'm about to run out of bullets, but that's usually not needed. I actually got him right before I enabled the power in this recording. The casual has auto aim, which actually really helps here. I imagine if they tried to snipe him, they would die right away. This helicopter actually does a ton of damage. There's more repelling, same as before, than a final shootout. Well, a shootout for the casual. The speedrun will just run to the right and avoid all the enemies, even though the NPC crew will be far behind still trying to clear the fight out. The speedrun jumps down to get to the escape ambulance quickly, and will get inside of it, then back out, then blow it up. This is a 2-in-1 trick. 1. By getting into the ambulance, it triggers the next checkpoint, so when we die, it puts us in the ambulance again, but our teammates will be caught up and inside too, instead of waiting for them to get past the shootout. 2. By blowing up the ambulance and having Michael later die to that same explosion, it sets up the same hospital warp glitch used in Blitzplay in Caída Libre, where when the mission ends, our character will be forced teleported to the closest hospital. Honestly, I was a bit slow blowing up the ambulance there. Usually I just drop the C4 on the ground instead of clumsily placing it on the door. Both players then just have a nice drive back in the Wii Woo box, and the speedrun can curb boost and brake boost even in this thing, along with taking a slightly better line up to Franklin's house. Watch the speedrun after the cutscene in Franklin's house. They T-pose for a moment as the game gets confused and sends them to the hospital, which is very close to our next mission. And that's the end of Bureau Raid, a pretty lengthy mission for both players, with no major time saves but lots of small technical tricks that add up to another 4 minutes of time save, but it's only a 30% difference instead of 60% this time. Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and welcome to the halfway point of my video. We're moving on to legal trouble, and both the speedrun and casual need a car. It's pretty unlucky for the speedrun to need to go all the way to this intersection for a vehicle, but at least he's not halfway across the city like the casual is. This mission starts at the movie studio, and involves chasing Devin Weston's lawyer Molly onto the airport to retrieve a hard copy of the film they were making. As the speedrun arrives to the studio, if they have a car with tall suspension, they can actually drive right up the steps to instantly begin the cutscene. Otherwise, you have to get out and punch up the steps for speed, as shown here. Which vehicle is chosen next is also dependent on what car you get from the road. If you get a nice sports or supercar, it will be located second in line with the door open, which is nice and fast to get into. If you don't have a good car off the street, you've got two options. The Rapid GE I take because it's close, and you don't spend much time on foot. And this drive is mostly flat, and only has three points of like actual turning, so the top speed of the Rapid GT works well. Other runners mostly go for the Serrano, but I find it's about the same pace in driving for me, and also in the far end of the parking lot, and time spent on foot really adds up quick. Before we can head to the airport, we have to meet up with Molly so we can chase her in. Going straight to the airport fails the mission, so the speedrun will dip right through this opening and head towards the objective from the opposite direction that's intended where the casual is going. Being much any farther right for the speedrun here would fail the mission, so this jump isn't exactly easy to manage. This mission reinforces another part I really like about GTA speedruns. Even if you study runs and learn the strats like watching my videos here, there's still a second level of game knowledge needed to run this game. That's based on problem solving when something goes wrong and knowing what best to do next, as well as selecting the best vehicle when given a choice, which can make or break the time a mission takes. I spent many hours doing races in this game before speedrunning, and that has really helped me in that knowledge regard. I try to share as much as I can on those decisions, but sometimes it's just intuition which feels good for me but is hard to explain. We now return the strategy, and the speedrun turns right early and that lets us get in front of Molly to begin rubber banding her along behind us, making her and the police drive as fast as their AI allows since we are taking shorter routes than the game expects. During this long left turn, I have markers like the red fire paint and the light patch of concrete I hit to ensure I don't turn too tightly and outpace the scripted driving. 
being ahead also skips forward the four slowdowns of the cars getting blown away that we don't even need to look at. The speedrun then makes a cut left around the back of those airplanes and no more, and from here it's just drive to the spot where Molly crashes into the building, and the game slows you down so she's a certain distance ahead. After rounding this corner, the speedrun jumps out of the car. This not only enters the cutscene quicker, but also puts you on foot right away instead of getting out of the car like the casual has to do. It is important to aim the car slightly to the right when you jump. If you aim at Molly or anything else, it tends to fail, or even worse, softlock the game. We'll discuss what that means next mission if you don't already know. The speedrun punches the skip for slowdown walking as Molly runs to her death, or her transformation in the jello, whichever you prefer to call it. We grab the film, same as the casual, blap the security, then steal the plane as most people do to get out of this hangar. The speedrun takes a tight right turn to get in the air quickly and is flying towards the next mission, while the casual flies out mostly straight and both are able to lose the cops by evading the police choppers as they go. The speedrun is in first person to ensure they are over 900 feet, where aircraft get a speed bonus in this game. As the speedrun approaches the buildings, they will jump out when about next to the edge and use the parachute to get down, and are very close to the next mission spawn point just as the cops are lost, which ends the mission as the plane explodes in the distance. The casual took more shots while taking off and has lost at least one engine, and decides to ditch into the water as they've seen Sully's miracle on the Hudson and try to recreate that crash landing. And they lose the cops just as that happens. My what a cliffhanger! That ends legal trouble, with the speedrun taking about 5 minutes in the casual 7, due to starting the mission faster thanks to the hospital glitch, better driving and cutting the corners, and getting in and out of cutscenes faster. And amazingly, the casual lands it. This game is quite nice about that kind of touchdown. The speedrun waits in this corner to receive the call from Solomon that properly finishes the last mission, being closer would despawn the wrap-up if any closer over this wall. The casual has to swim up, grab a car, and find their way up to the court center, which they are mindful enough to realize they can go off-road up this way to it. We'll skip ahead a moment to them arriving, and the mission triggers quite a bit farther away due to them being in a car oddly as the cutscene plays. But instead of now being on foot like the speedrun, the casual is just sitting in the car, unable to do anything at all. This is a softlock. The game is still running, but you can't progress the story at all. In fact, here, you can't do anything but open the menu. No movement or any other input works. It's really weird. This happens when you arrive to the wrap-up in a vehicle. To be fair, it only happens on the older 2015 patch the speedrun plays on, but I wanted to include it just to show what could happen, and it still does catch newer speedrunners often. We won't count it against the casual time-wise. It is possible to start this mission on a motorcycle sometimes, but only if you're doing a wheelie upon hitting the mission trigger. But not even that consistently works, so most of the runners avoid attempting it. Though it would be nice to skip this long run by riding a motorcycle over to and up these stairs, where the speedrun is in first person to run faster top speedwise, and also take tighter turns on the corners. Starting the shootout that is this mission now, the speedrun will run right away over to the right because they know the fork route will get blocked by the chopper. This guy around the corner just needs to be shot anywhere in his body to be knocked over, a death isn't necessary, and that triggers the cutscene for the speedrun. The speedrun instantly shoots the pilot, then zooms in again with Trevor the back up while aiming more or less the same direction, which lines us up now to use Trevor's parachute to get down to the bottom level right away, and begin cleaning up the enemies. We need to move up to this bench soon but can't do it early or David will get stuck before he gets there. This all happens really fast on the speedruns, so we're not going to sink the casual back up just yet. The speedrun wants to kill as many people as possible right now. We need to hit a minimum amount to progress the mission, and you can get most of them now, then meet Davy at the bench. Two more guys spawn up on the above bridge, then that is enough people dead that we can head to the parking lot already, while the casual is still just taking out the first helicopter. I say first helicopter because there was a second one in here the speedrun didn't even see. The casual snipes for a while as Trevor, then is prompted to switch back to Michael instead who fights along the catwalks and triggers another helicopter to spawn as you work your way over to the stairs, aka a way to get off buildings for people without parachutes. All of these enemies being taken out right now don't count towards the number the casual needs to go into the parking lot area. That counter only seems to begin rising once Michael or Trevor's on the ground level, so the speedrun's early arrival down there gave us that huge advantage. The casual finishes off the required enemies, and we're back in sync, and that was 3 minutes of work for the casual and less than 1 for the speedrun. I love how optimized that shootout is. This carbon is air over to the right is a consistent spawn and the least likely that his tire shot or the speedrun are killed, so he goes in there while the casual clears enemies and then picks out a car. 
The speedrun takes a wide line into a tight right that cut down the hill faster instead of falling the road, and generally just outpaces the chopper as that's what's supposed to happen for even the casual, though it can sometimes stick around and needs manually killed before the end of the mission. Heading to the ending meetup spot, the speedrun stays left instead of going right. We can jump down next to Michael from this parking lot instead of walking in from the other side. That wraps up the wrap up, and the speedrun is again majorly faster than the casual thanks to starting the mission faster by landing right at it, and that insanely optimized shootout by running around quickly and parachuting down as Trevor. This happens to put us at exactly 3 hours saved over the course of this series so far. So let's take a look at the difference between the two heist options for the Bureau Raid, the roof that we do in the speedrun on the right, and the slower fire crew on the left. But we'll be doing the fire crew with speedrun strats. So the roof picks their option, then they are done with the setup missions, because there are none. However, the fire crew heist has two setup missions, and that kind of gives away part one of why it's so much slower. But it's absurdly slower, as you will see. So the fire crew speedrunner calls a fire truck from 911 as that's the fastest way to get one over here. I thought I had this cool strat where I would park Michael's car at the Los Santos Customs, then get the truck, take it back to Michael's car, and then paint the car like an architect's plans to lose the cops. But the car despawned when I tried it. I also tried going to the tattoo parlor to lose the cops, but that didn't work either because the drive over to the closest one is too long. If you didn't know, you can lose the cops by entering a tattoo parlor or barbershop for the first time in a playthrough. We make use of that in the final mission. So we're already 3 minutes in the hole and only one setup mission done. Next we gotta steal a 4 seater car and take it into the city to a spot I found near Simeon's dealership that's the closest you can park to the FIB building that's also close to Lester's house where this version of the heist ends. As the fire crew parks up and calls Lester to confirm the getaway spot then comes back to the warehouse, the roof finally joins us again to sync up, and then the fire crew has a time of day change since their mission is done at night. The fire crew heads out solo as Michael. This version of the heist, even though much slower, is likely the intended Rockstar choice, as it's inspired by the first Mission Impossible movie. I'll be covering that in my next episode of Movies That Inspire GTA V. Michael poses as the janitor and goes inside. I could not find any speedrun strats for this section, besides just playing by knowing what you need to do already. Man, that's boring in this section, as you actually have to do the janitor work. Even if this was faster, we'd probably consider not doing it just so we don't have to do this cleanup stuff. The real speedrun is in a helicopter, then gets the parachute in and the fire crew is just mopping and planting two bombs. If you have liked the video by the way and aren't already subscribed, subbing to my channel will help ensure that I don't have to become a janitor in real life, and that would be much appreciated. If you already are subscribed, then this is a reminder to clear your browsing history, if needed. The fire crew heist is skipped ahead about two minutes. It's just more mopping than exiting the building. Once outside, we let Franklin know the head over, then he picks up Michael who has magically teleported down to this road. The bombs are exploded and then the fire crew can head inside. There's really no strats for it, just run and jump and know where you're going. That's about it. Elevator. Then running upstairs. Blowing a door open, then just pulling the server out, then running. Then blowing open a door, but you don't do anything and a teammate dies for no reason. Then more running, but it's burning, and there's a few enemies. Then running, but your teammates are back. Then repelling, with nothing to do but just hold down. Then you're running out of the building, and safely into the truck. This mission is clearly based on a movie, because it plays like one. It's much longer for the speedrun, but also quite non-interactive, even for casual play. I'm glad the roof option is the faster one because it's also way more fun with lots of cool strats, and I'd say the fire crew version of this heist is not high on replay value, as well as being twice as long as the roof option. Thanks for watching. Something funny that happened while I was testing the fire crew, I got so far ahead of the teammates that I arrived at the elevator shaft before it spawned in, so I fell down it to my death. I'm back from my little vacation from Casual First Speedrun and look forward to ending this game series, doing a few bonus episodes, then starting the next game, GTA San Andreas, soon after that. See you next video.